Hey, I'm Joseph Arvidsson, host of the Criminologist podcast and this Criminologist YouTube channel. Doing another crossover episode here where I'm going to give you a bit of a sneak peek of what goes into the podcast production. I am about to record episode 25, as yet untitled, but it's the episode where I'm going to begin by recapping a little bit of the themes from last week where we modeled um, the spot the dog exercise from our friends with the sticks practice model. And then um, I'm also going to look at the um, desistance trajectory of actor Danny Trejo and kind of use that as a case study. If that sounds familiar to those of you who are regular viewers of the YouTube channel, um, that was actually the seventh in our series um, on desistance. I did that via the channel. Take a look at um, Danny Trejo's desistance trajectory. So I want to tease out some of those themes here today for the podcast audience as well. All right. So fingers crossed. I rarely do these all in one take, but again, that's part of, um, you're getting a look behind the curtain here. So I've already queued up all of my equipment. Looks like all my levels are set and we're ready to rock and roll. So fingers crossed. Hello and welcome to episode 25 of the Criminologist podcast. Happy to have you all with us today. In this episode, I want to take the opportunity to follow up on last week's show in which we modeled Spot the Dog with the help of our client, Patrick Bateman. Um, last week, I really wanted to make sure not to rush through that model of Dr. Bergone's Spot the Dog exercise, which they utilize in their sticks practice model. But that meant that Due to time consideration, um, the modeling would take up most of our time for last week's show. And so today, I'm going to kick off at least by giving those themes their due diligence and tease them out a bit more for the listener. So if you have not listened to last week's episode, probably best to stop now on this episode and go back and have a listen to that one first. You don't want to watch Godfather 2 before Godfather 1. Leave the gun, take the cannoli. So to recap what we learned last week, again, thanks to uh, client Patrick Bateman and the spot the dog exercise, which we modeled, um, the following themes here. Our thoughts direct our behavior. Treats or cookies teach. Spankings or kicks to the rear end confuse. I don't control outside cues. And outside cues don't control me. I do control my inside cues. And inside cues are my responsibility. And finally, I control my behavior. My behavior is my responsibility. So let's take a look at those themes one by one, beginning with our thoughts direct our behavior. Now, we saw this illustrated through our Spot the Dog exercise in last week's show, reviewing that with... Um, our client of how Spot learned how to sit, what that process looked like. When Spot finally learned to sit on his own, it was when he made the connection that placing his butt on the floor would result in him getting a treat or a dog biscuit or some, some type of praise. Let's apply this to other situations to give this some context since this is really at the crux of all cognitive behavioral interventions. And Maybe as I go through this one, you can try to relate to situations in your life since that, of course, will work and maybe make it a little bit more applicable, help land on you a little bit better. Um, when I was prepping this, I contemplated illustrating this more via a client example, um, but I opted not to do that because these concepts are universal. Um, that is, it, these just don't apply to criminality. Um, so I could just use myself to highlight some of these concepts. Um, as I record this, I have a beverage in front of me. And if we reverse engineer how this glass of apple cider ended up on, on my desk here, we would see that 
It could be traced back to my thoughts, specifically my thoughts that I want to have something to drink while I record. Um, don't want to get a dry throat, always want to um, be able to wet my whistle. It's fall weather out, it's rather crisp in the air, um, really good apple cider season. Uh, all of those thoughts led to my behavior of opening up the refrigerator and pouring myself a glass of apple cider. If I never had those thoughts in my head, this glass of apple cider would not be sitting before me now. Take a moment to reflect on all the decisions you've made just within the last hour. And if you try real hard, you can trace them all back to preceding thoughts that you had. On the one hand, you know, this is pretty self-evident if you reflect on it for a moment. But on the other hand, not so obvious to some. Okay, next we learn that um, treats or cookies or dog biscuits, what have you, they teach. Um, I should note that um, Guy Bergon and his colleagues who created Spot are Canadian. So um, as Guy taught this to me, um, and as the printed materials reflect, um, they give dogs cookies in Canada. Here in the US, at least in my house, we give our dogs treats, dog treats. Um, and again, treats are really anything we like, okay? Um, and as we learn, the source of cookies or treats or biscuits can be inside or outside. Let's talk about inside treats first. These are things that we give ourselves, things like self-praise, um, the attaboys that we give ourselves, feelings of accomplishment, feeling proud, things of that nature. Um, what about outside treats? This is things like money, compliments that we receive from others, smiles we get from people, um, like I said, accolades, things of that nature. Most importantly though, we learn that inside treats and outside treats teach. That is, after all, how Spot learned to sit, right? Um, I wanna come back to this concept of cost and rewards in a second, but let's quick review our next takeaway, which was, um, you know, spankings or um, kicks to the rear end, um, spanking the dog, um, those confuse. And we learned the source of these scoldings or spankings can be inside or outside. Um, inside um, sanctions, if you will, that we give ourselves are I'm no good, feelings of shame or guilt or regret, all that kind of stuff. Um, outside um, scoldings, if you will, are someone saying something to hurt your feelings or being neglected. Um, for justice involved individuals, jail, of course, um, sanctions, just again, those sort of traditional external punishments. Okay, now we learn that um, we give Spot a swat to his rear end when he sits, you know, that's just gonna confuse the crap out of him, right? He's expecting a treat for sitting and he gets, again, a, sp a spanking. Last episode, um, I gave a couple illustrations to our client, Patrick, about how um, inside cost and rewards, if you will, are the most important because they happen first. Recall I um, explained to Patrick, or I, I illustrated through the story of um, if we um, used our imaginations or pretended that, you know, for example, if Patrick is sitting down to get high and soon as he um, takes a, you know, puff of illicit narcotics, if he's Rather than feeling the high, if he is magically transported to jail where he sits for six months um, with no feelings of euphoria from the drugs, but then after six months when he's released, if then the high kicks in, if the sequence happened that way, um, that would really deter him from using that drug again. Um, and again, it's because the concept here was the 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 cost and rewards we get first are the most effective and usually those are the cost and rewards that we give ourselves right we're we're either praising ourselves or beating us up for decisions that we make before external forces do that before other people 
do that. Um, that really is what drives our behavior. Um, we talk a ton on this show about the risk need responsivity model. Um, and you know, the risk needs responsivity model is derived from the psychology of criminal contact, um, which is the origin of general personality and cognitive social learning theory by James Bonta and Don Andrews. Uh, and, and in a nutshell, they're saying all behavior is learned behavior, including criminal behavior. And it's all predicated on the perceived or signaled cost and rewards of a contemplated behavior. And so in last week's episode, we had a visit from our client, Patrick Bateman. Um, if you recall, we looked at his offense description. He's on for assault. He basically um, broke a beer bottle over a bouncer's head when he was told he couldn't leave the bar with a beer bottle. Um, so now if we look at those, those um, if we tally up rather those costs and rewards, or you know, those treats and scoldings, if you will, inside and outside, of his contemplated behavior to spat to smash a beer bottle over the bouncer's head. You know what would that look like? Um, his inside treats. He's giving himself things like, "Well, this is going to feel great to put this clown in his place, right?" Patrick, we know Patrick gets off on violence. This gives him a rush. Those are all inside treats. Um, outside treats. I don't know if necessarily his buddies were there to cheer him on, but you know, again, those external or interpersonal. Um, stimuli that would be an example of outside treats um inside consequences well for patrick he had no regrets no remorse um and we know the outside consequences you know he might get arrested he might get convicted sentenced placed on probation supervision but again the 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 treats and the and the costs that come first are the ones that are really driving patrick's behavior and in this case it's the immediate gratification that He's going to get back at this bouncer who's trying to tell him that he can't leave the bar with a beer. So that's his inside treats he's giving himself. Forget about the potential outside consequences or scoldings. Again, I'm using um, the language from our spot the dog exercise here. But, you know, the possible, and I emphasize the word possible, possible arrest, conviction, sentencing, probation, supervision. Those are down the road. So that's not really what's driving Patrick's immediate behavior. Um Again, it's the ones that come first really drive our behavior. Um, now, again, last week we talked about some takeaways. I don't control outside cues and outside cues don't control me. In this case, um, for Patrick in his offense, the outside cue was the bouncer telling him he couldn't leave the bar with his bottle of beer. Now, to you or I, that would have been the same outside cue, right? You know, we all experience the world that, you know, we see the world's the same. Um, but again, you and I have different thinking around being told that we can't leave the bar with a bottle of beer than Patrick did. You know, maybe we go back inside to finish our drink. Maybe we pour it out or hand it to the bouncer to dispose of. Our balance of cost and rewards in that situation are different from that of Patrick's. Um, Unless you are wondering what we do with our justice involved clients in these situations, you know, once they're placed on supervision, is use cognitive behavioral interventions to get them first to examine their thoughts and behaviors in this way, and then to start making that link um, between their thinking and their behavior. Um, we start working on tipping that balance of cost and rewards or, you know, treats and scoldings, if you will. Um, we use cognitive restructuring techniques to replace their riskier thoughts, which lead to poor outcomes, criminal behavior, um, with less risky thoughts. And we, of course, we're going to cover these techniques in upcoming episodes here. But again, just in case you're saying to yourself, yeah, I get it. I get the thought behavior.